how to tell wild animals, right? How to tell wild animals by Carolyn Wells. Carolyn Wells was an American poet, American poetess and writer. The poem that you are going to read, I think you've already read in this school. It's a humorous story. It's a humorous poem. Humorous, that makes you laugh. Very interesting. In a very humorous way, the poet has tried to educate the readers as to how to identify wild animals. The poet has familiarized the readers, the young readers with different characteristics and features of different wild animals. In a way, what the poet has tried to do, not simply imparting the knowledge of the features of the wild animals, but also making them cautious of these creatures. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So let us read the poem. Uh, a few uh, peculiar things are also there in the poem that I'll discuss with you in the same context, okay? If ever you should go by chance to jungles in the East, and if there should to you advance a large and tawny beast, if it roars at you as you are dying, you'll know it is the Asian lion. Did you hear when I read? Can you, can you identify the rhyming scheme here in this stanza? Yes, ma'am. Yes. A, B, yes. B, B, mm -hmm. no, 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 A, B, A, B, C, D. A, B, A, B, then what did you say? C, D. Why, why would you say C, D? Why would you say C, D? Yes. Chance. Yes, yes. Chance, advance or rhyming. Okay. And right. And beast or right. rhyming. Right, right. Dine, lion, they are different. Okay. Yes. But here's one thing very interesting. What do you see? If he roars at you as you are dying. Is this the word current? Dying? Have you heard this word before? No, ma'am. What is this word? Can you make out? Die. Die. From die it is dying. Right? It should have been dying. But the poet has changed the spelling of the word. And this is not that he has done at one place. He has done at another two places also. That he has changed the spellings of the word. Why did he change? Because he wanted the word dying to rhyme with the word lion. Because you see, if he had written as you are dying, then it would not have rhymed with lion. Isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Now spelling it as dying, he has made it rhyme with lion. Right? So sometimes the poets, they take liberty. They take liberty to change the spelling of the words which are incorrect spellings, yet they do it just to create an effect in the poem or just to uh, make it rhythmic, right? And such a poetic device, it is called poetic license. So here what has been used, poetic license. As poet has taken the liberty to change the spellings of the word dying. There can be a question, why did he change the spelling of the word? You would say he changed the spelling of the words to make it rhyme with the word lion. Clear? Yes, ma'am. You must remember this, okay? All right, now let's start this. 
if ever you should go by chance, the poet is telling you, if by chance you are going in the jungle, to jungles in the east, in the east of the world, if you are going to the jungles and there, and if there should to you advance, should to you advance, if you find a creature, if you find a wild animal advancing to you, approaching you, coming near to you, a large and tawny beast, and you find that the animal that is coming near to you is a large, a huge animal, tawny, tawny is brown skin and is brown in color or has brown skin, beast meaning animal. If he roars at you as you are dying, you will be able to make out which white animal is this when that animal roars. Because as he roars, you will feel as if you are dying you are dying. Why are you dying? Why do you have this feeling of dying at the at hearing the roaring of the lion? Ma'am, because we scared at the time that he will eat. Right, right. It is out of scare. It is out of fear. Fine. If he roars at you, you will be so terrorized. You will be so frightened. You would feel as if you are dying out of fear. So the poet says, when you come across such an animal who roars at you, making you feel you are dying out of fear, then you will know, you must understand, you must recognize, you must identify this animal as the Asian lion. Right? So this is how the poet is helping you. How can you identify an Asian lion? There can be a question in the exam in this way also. There can be a question in the exam. How can you identify an Asian lion in the jungle? There can be a question in the exam. What happens when a brown creature comes before you? and you are ignorant about the animal, right? The answer would be the same. When you find a large brown animal that roars at you and you feel you are dying out of fear, then you understand it is Asian lion. Is that clear? There can be a question that you are, you are teaching about or you are telling about wild animals to your younger sisters. How would you describe to your younger sister about Asian lion? So you see that you are getting the clues from here, isn't it? That Asian lion is tall, large, has brown skin. It roars. When it roars, uh, the humans, they get frightened. They get scared right and it is very difficult to escape the lion that's how you will tell yes ma'am okay so is is that clear the asian lion yes ma'am okay now or if sometime when roaming around a noble wild beast greets you with black stripes on a yellow ground just notice if he eats you this simple rule may help you learn the Bengal tiger to discern. First of all, poetic, uh, sorry, rhyming scheme, please. Okay, ma'am. A, B, A, B, C, C. A, B, A, B, C, C. That's right. Okay. Or if sometime when roaming round, and similarly the poet says, if you are going through the jungle, 
when roaming around roaming around meaning you are just moving around aimlessly you are just moving around aimlessly through the jungle and a noble wild beast noble royal a royal wild animal greets you now do you think that the wild animal would greet you no ma'am no this is how he is making it humorous you can't even imagine wild animal greeting you or you greeting wild animal right so he says that if a royal wild creature greets you meaning and encounters you if you come across if you face a royal wild animal in the jungle the animal that has black stripes on a yellow ground what is ground here skin skin good very good right the animal that has black stripes on his yellow skin just notice if he eats you and observe when the animal eats you then you can make out the simple rule may help you to learn meaning when he comes forward to eat you when he eats you it will help you to understand that this is bengal tiger to discern meaning it is easy for you to understand it is easy for you to make out to recognize that the creature is the bengal tiger so here the humor is just notice if he eats you right do you think you will wait for the animal to eat you if the animal is that fierce would you be waiting for the animal to eat you so this is humorous the clue that he has given the guess that he has given is that clear yes ma'am okay now the next one if strolling forth a beast you view whose hide with spots is peckled as soon as he is leapt on you you will know it is the leopard it will do no good to roar with pain he'll only lap and lap again yes poetic device rhyming scheme here a b a b c c a b a b c c right correct okay now here one thing more you see using the animals referring to the wild animals the poet is making you cautious while you are going through the jungle or you are coming across such creatures right when poet is giving the reference of these wild animals this is also a poetic device what is this poetic device called it is called allusion a w l l u s i o n the basic idea behind this poem is not only to not to entertain you but in a humorous way to educate you about the wild animals so that you are careful is that clear yes ma'am yes if strolling forth a beast you view if strolling strolling is a casual walk like i say i go for morning stroll i go for evening stroll right if you are walking in a casual way and you view and you see an animal the animal whose hide whose hide meaning whose skin whose skin has with spots is peppered whose skin has some black spots whose skin has some black dots spotted now look here with spots is peppered spots are the dots or the black spots and peppered spots have been called peppered why because black pepper have you heard black pepper the spice yes ma'am right it is similar to the black pepper so here he says 
that when you see an animal whose skin has black spots like pepper and as you face this animal as soon as he has leapt on you as you face this animal this animal has leapt has jumped on you has pounced on you you can easily make out such an animal is none other than the leopard leopard is the one who would see his prey and he was instantly pounce on his prey he would pounce on the victim right has the poet used the word correctly he has leapt on you are the correct spellings no ma'am what are the correct spellings and jump on you no what are the correct spellings of left and i don't know okay you see that this word is this should be spelled as l e a p t left right this word has been is the past form of the verb leap l e a p leap which means jump and the past form of leap is leapt l e a p t leapt right but the poet has used it as l e p t again the poet has changed the spelling of the word for his own convenience in the poem because he did not he wanted to emphasize more on the action of the animals not the words is that clear yes ma'am will know it is the leopard it will do no good to roar with pain when the leopard pounces on you when the leopard jump is jumps on you right you will roar you will roar will meaning you will cry loudly with pain but crying loudly is not going to help you because he will only lap and lap again he will jump and jump he will repeatedly jump on you because a leopard does not spare his prey so easily so the poet has given the characteristic of leopard first of all its physical features that the leopard has black spots like black pepper secondly when the leopard finds his prey then he just jumps on his prey and keeps on jumping until or unless he kills his prey is that clear yes ma'am so here again this is what we would say it is poetic license the poet has used because he has taken the liberty to change the spellings of the word which are incorrect but he had to use those very words because he wanted to emphasize on action of the animals clear yeah? yes ma'am okay if when you are walking round your yard you meet a creature there who hugs you very very hard be sure it's a bear if you have any doubts i guess he'll give you just one more caress yes the rhyming scheme um a b a b c c right Now it says if when you are walking round your yard, yard meaning your lawn, right? If you are walking through your lawn and you meet a creature there, you find a creature there. The creature, when he finds you, he hugs you very tight. He hugs you tightly. He does not free you. he says such a creature that hugs you tightly is a bear 
bear when he hold he finds his prey the bear hugs the bear holds his prey very tightly so when you come across such an animal that holds you tightly do remember it is a bear if you have any doubts i guess he says if you have any doubts if it is really a bear or not then i think the poet thinks he will give you just one more caress he will give you just one more caress meaning repeatedly he would be hugging you not sparing you and that would confirm that the animal is a bear that will help you to guess to make out that the animal that holds you tightly is a bear only is that clear yes ma'am okay though to distinguish beasts of prey a no voice might non plus the crocodile you always may tell from the hyena thus hyenas come with merry smiles but if they weep they are crocodiles yes the rhyming scheme a b a b c c right though to distinguish beasts of prey the poet wants to know if you can distinguish if you can dis differentiate between the animals like crocodile and hyenas how would you identify them a no voice might non plus in order to differentiate in order to know the difference between those very animals beasts of prey meaning those very animals who hunt for their prey right you see that the lion and tigers etc kinds of animals they do not hunt for prey they keep on moving around around and when they find their prey then they don't let them go right but the animals like hyenas and crocodiles they are always secretly looking for their prey hunting for their prey and he says a no voice a no voice meaning a new person the one who does not know the one who is not familiar with these animals the one who has no knowledge of these animals the one who encounters these animals for the first time perhaps might non plus non plus meaning might get puzzled might get confused now your this sentence a no voice might non plus this is a wrong sentence grammatically this is incorrect the correct sentence should be a no voice might be non plussed or might have been non plussed but the point here is why the poet has changed the form of the sentence why he had made the sentence incorrect because he wanted non plussed to rhyme with thus did you understand yes ma'am if it was non plussed then it could not have been rhyming with thus so in order to make it rhyme with thus in order to create rhythm in his poem he had changed the sentence which is incorrect but the meaning is clear right so he says that a person who is not familiar with these animals would get confused would get puzzled when he finds these animals who are hunting for their prey the crocodiles you always may tell from the hyena thus why it is so because hyenas you will always find that they are smiling have you noticed their faces always smiling yes ma'am right and crocodiles always in tears now he tells you the distinction between the two hyenas come with merry smiles why hyenas are always smiling hyenas when they get their prey after killing their prey they smile so when you find an animal that is smiling after killing its prey you can easily make out that animal is hyena right but if they weep they are crocodiles 
and crocodiles soon after killing their prey they have tears in their eyes so such an animal that have tears in his eyes after killing his prey that is called crocodiles haven't you heard the pro proverb also don't shed crocodiles tears yes ma'am right crocodiles tears meaning deceptive not real fine yes any doubt here no ma'am so here also the poet has used poetic license okay yes a true chameleon is small a lizard sort of thing he hasn't any ears at all and not a single wing if there is nothing on the tree it's the chameleon you see the true chameleon is small chameleon i hope you have seen no ma'am you have never seen okay you ask your mother she may might have seen it in the childhood we people have seen so many because actually we were playing outside you people do not play outside right that's why the true chameleon is small it's small but it has long tail it's look like lizard a lizard sort of thing it is a species of lizard it looks like a lizard but it is not the lizard its tail is longer than that of the lizard he hasn't any ears at all and not a single wing chameleon does not have any ears nor does it have any wings if there is nothing on the tree if you find a tree and you find nothing on the tree is just brown branches of the tree then you can see a chameleon there why because chameleon you will find as brown as brown are the branches of the tree so this is a peculiar feature of chameleon what chameleon keeps changing colors keeps changing the color of its skin according to the surface according to the surroundings like if chameleon is on a dry um, barren uh, you can say leafless brown tree chameleon will change its color into brown if chameleon you will find in the midst of bushes or shrubs you will find that it changes its color into green if it is there at the place where there are purple flowers blooming it will change its color into purple why do you think it changes its color ma'am to camouflaging with them right to come to cam uh, to camouflage with them why does it do so this is a way to protect itself right that is very scientific answer you have given very correct that it, it is camouflaging camouflaging with the surface with the surroundings but at the same time what it is it changes its color to protect itself from the human threat from the humans sometimes humans are unable to identify or to notice a chameleon why because it changes its color clear yes ma'am any doubt here ma'am what is the meaning of taste the chameleon you see yes ma'am the last line uh, it's a chameleon you see he says that when you find nothing on the tree no leaves nothing just branches of the tree then you can see chameleon and how you can identify chameleon chameleon would be looking as brown as the branches of the tree why because the tree is brown so it will change its color as you yourself said camouflaging right yes ma'am fine so it will change its color when in the green surroundings it will change its color into green when it is somewhere where there are the sunflower flowers blooming 
it will change its color into yellow. This is what is the feature of Kamula. Right? Okay, ma'am. Yes. Uh, now look at this. These three are the these three are the um, poetic devices which have been used here. Allusion, alliteration, and poetic license. Allusion throughout the poem. Because in every stanza, the poet is referring to a wild animal in order to make the readers cautious about wild animals and also to educate them about the features of the wild animals. Clear? Okay, let us find out alliteration now. Yes, in the first stanza, do you find alliteration? Um, no, ma'am. No. In this next. Second one. Ma'am, roaming round. Roaming round. Very good. Correct. No, ma'am. In second one, there is no one um, except roaming round. Okay. okay. Fine. In the third one. He has. Oh, uh, he has. Generally, we do not consider it because he is a pronoun and has his, a helping verb. No, ma'am. Okay. Yes, in the next. I'm very, very. Hmm, where is it? I'm in mean, third line. Uh, who hugs you very, very hard? Very, very is not alliteration and more. Can you make out what is it? Very, very. Repetition. Repetition. In the previous stance also there is repetition. Can you see? Lap and lap. It's not lap. It's lap and lap. Lap is lap. Lap. This ka matlab god hota hai. Godi hota hai. Right? He will only lap and lap. Right? So that is repetition. Okay. Any other alliteration here in this stanza? Read carefully. No, ma'am. Ah, it is there. Read time and again very carefully. Third line. Uh, hugs and hard. Right. Ha, ha. Hugs her, hard her. The same sound is there. Okay. So when you come across such a sense, such an example, you will quote the line, you will underline hugs and hard, and you will write alliteration. Or you will underline very, very, and you will write repetition. All right. Okay. Now the next one. Yes. No voice and non plus. Right, correct. Addiction. No voice, non plus. That is right. Okay. And then there is poetic license. Okay. Yes. Now the next. Mom, in the last one, there is po poetic license in the last line. It's the chameleon, you see, uh, in the last line. No, it's not poetic license. 
See, poetic licenses where the poet has changed the word spellings or the poet has changed the form of sentence. All right. Okay, ma'am. Yes. Do you find alliteration in this in this stanza? No, ma'am. No. Fine. Yes, ma'am. Any any doubt? Anything else? Ma'am, what is the meaning of the first word of last line? First word of last line. This one, T I S. Yes, ma'am. Ah, it's a short form of its. Sometimes the poets they change just to make the poetry interesting. Right, it is its. It is the commonly and you see. So the poet has written it like this TIS. Okay, ma'am. Yes. Anything else? No, ma'am. Okay, now whatever the next topic you want, you will post it in the forum. Okay. Okay, ma'am.